but Terrence Shannon has been on a tear, an absolute yeah. tear. He's averaging 30 and a half points in the last six games. The only problem with Illinois is that they don't play a ton of defense. Uh, so, and I think UConn, the, the scary thing about UConn is they can just, they can do whatever style you want to do. Like, if you right. want to run, they can run. Oh, they ran. They they were killing them in transition early in that game. Exactly. If you want to slow it down and play defense, they'll do that. Like, they have an answer for seemingly every single problem. Hey, y'all. Greenlight has official merch, like this hat right here, or like the one on my head, this dad hat. Love this hat. I'm not even a dad hat guy, but this thing fits great. This, this hat right here fits great. Uh, we've got hoodies. We've got... By the way, this hoodie's like super comfy. I mean, it's like soft, plush. It's not the type of hoodie that's going to get stiff with one wash. Uh, and the shirts, too, because like I'm a big comfort guy, okay? You got like this white shirt here. You got the shirt with the logo, the Abbey Road looking logo with Dr. Fax smoking, uh, presumably a blunt. Kyle carrying Cowboy Reed, making dribbling a basketball, which I've never seen him actually do, and me carrying a football. Uh, and then you've got this, the the black shirt here, too, with the logo. So uh, stickers, hit the link in the description in the video, uh, below the video, actually, uh, and make sure to tag us on social media showing off your green light merch. It's quality, quality threads here, okay? Wouldn't do it any other way. Welcoming to the show is a guy who did not sleep last night. Um, it might have lost some money this weekend. I don't know. Uh, we'll ask him in a second. Dan Katz, a.k.a. Big Cat. What up, dude? What's up, guys? Um, might have lost money is too kind. I have never not lost money the first weekend of March Madness. I came to realization on Friday midday uh, that I will never win. I'll never be a guy who wins a gambling. I just need to be a guy who's rich with friends. So I started like we were we were in the gambling cave and... I, I thought Nebraska was had no chance of beating Texas A&M, but Will Compton Idiot. was with us, and I was like, Idiots. You know what? I'll bet Nebraska because I need friends because I won't win. So, um, yeah, never 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 win money, but it was a great weekend. I, I, had, I, I love college hoops, best time of year. How much did you lose on Nebraska? That was 8000 Okay. All right. What was the biggest loss on the weekend? Mm, yesterday was a bloodbath for a while i want oh actually yeah no i, w I was again being a good friend i lost fifteen thousand dollars on jmu easy that was that was never a doubt um against duke that was we i don't think we got to cheer for a single second uh no, so yeah awful. somewhere in the 15 20 is usually like whenever I, I try to push it a little uh but we have fun it's fun time any bad beats this weekend Oh, no, I actually was on the right side of two lucky, lucky winners that you never get. I had the double overtime Creighton, Oregon uh, over, which we were riding out. I did a strategy yeah. where I was like, who's the dumbest guy in this room? Because I was doing so bad, and it was Ben Mintz. And I was like, <laughs> give me the pick. And then we took that pick, and his luck just always finds a way. And that game, if you watched it, had no business going over, but it was double overtime, so I got lucky with that. And then Oakland, I got lucky in overtime as well. So I, I actually, that's actually really p pathetic now that I think about it. You just asked if I had bad, I told you I lost all this money. You asked me if I had bad beats. I had zero bad beats. I actually had only lucky winners, and I still lost all this money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. so bad. No, I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> I, I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. It seems like a lot of money. So I guess the follow-up is what was your gross income in 2023? Uh, it was, it was not, it was, it was enough to afford those losses. It's like okay. show. It's high. responsible. Right yeah. I mean, my unit size has gone up as, uh, as the years have gone by. It's responsible. What, but what is a unit even? You don't have a real unit. I have a unit, but then I'm constantly going up or down. Yeah. But it stays around that, you know, spot. It's never like going crazy, crazy. So yeah. yeah. And, and listen, I'm at the point now I, I had one. I, the only thing I can do seemingly well in gambling is I can spot value in futures. They don't usually win, but I bet UConn fourteen to one in December. So that's I need UConn to win the tournament, and I'll be fine. And are you able to stay away from the weird stuff like live tennis? Because my problem was I'd get up with the kids at six thirty. I'd be solo for a few hours, and I just needed some sort of dopamine hit. 
My big issue is, yes, I'm able to stay away from that. My big issue is if someone gives me a tip, I have to take it. So as long as mm. I stay away from people giving tips. Bad tips. Because I'm just, like, especially when we're in the moment, we're in the cave, someone yells something out. It's like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll ride you with you. Like, that would be fun. Because I'm a big believer in uh, realistic gambling, knowing that you're not going to win. But it's about the experience and, like, when everyone's on one, you know, that, that Oregon Creighton game, we all, the whole room had it. Yes. And that was one of, like, I'll be thinking about that experience for the rest of my life. It was that much fun. In your live watches, if one guy's on the other side, do you make him shut the fuck up? Like, is there a rule that if, you know, you and Dave have, you know, um, five figures on a game that the guy with three figures can't talk? No, you know, it's like, dude, you're, you know, your little one hundred dollar parlay. We don't need you jumping up and down and cheering when, when, uh, when we're fucked. I think it's all relative. There's times when, yes, that will happen where it's like, dude, I need this win really bad. It's more like desperation. Who needs it the most? Um, but yeah, there are definitely times where I probably, I probably am like, shut the fuck up. I'll just give you the hundred bucks, which is wrong of me. Exactly, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that here, Doctor Facts. <laughs> Has like five dollar parlays every Sunday, and it'll be the the end of the four p.m.s, and I have like my whole savings on on a side, and he's cheering for his parlay. Yeah, like in my ear, I'm like, hey, I will pay you fifty seven dollars. Yeah, to shut the fuck <laughs> up. That's like that's like Jerry uh, will will be rooting so hard for a pick, and then it will hit, and we'll all congratulate him, and he'll be like, all right. I just need Odell Beckham to score three touchdowns, Kyle Yushek to score, and Patrick Mahomes to throw 500 yards to finish the parlay. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I was just yeah. rooting for you. <laughs> exactly. This is pointless. Um, all right. Dude, let's talk about something else pointless. UVA getting into the tournament. Okay. All right. You're hurting my feelings, Dan, and you media types. Just let me get this out. Okay. It'll, it'll, it'll be quick. The last 10 years, only two schools have better records than Virginia, Gonzaga and Kansas. In the ACC, over the last 10 years, Virginia has more conference wins than anybody. Eight more than Duke, 16 more than UNC. Virginia has 13 NCAA tournament wins over the last 10 years. Only nine teams have more. There is no Dude, question that the this? system – I'm sorry. What is There's this? no question that the system to prepare for this requires – wait, wait, wait. Can I just do a timeout, 20-second timeout? I mean, I just said I needed 60 but seconds. You, but, but this is so stupid because all you have to say is you won a national championship. You okay, literally can it. put that's, your nuts on the table and just be like – That's the Trump card. I dude. want that – dude, if – someone tweeted, they're like, would you take Virginia's last eight Virginia. years where they got bounced – What you guys got bounced like seven out of eight years, lost to a 16 seed for the one title. I would take that every fucking day and twice on Sunday. That's all you have to say, Macon. You have you, everyone. You don't, know, you don't know that. You don't know that because but, we've gone through this period where all of a sudden it's just like when we used to get in the tournament, it was exciting, and now it's like we still have the UMBC shadow. No, you and flags the national fly forever. Steals our joy. Flags yeah, well, fly forever. I just I can. It's easy to defend UVA in the aggregate while also agreeing that this year was not so defensible. No. It, so that's why I want to remind people that. We have won six out of 11 ACC regular seasons, and there are a lot of casuals who see the results in March, and they hurt our feelings. And I want to say, hey, man, I'm at John Paul Jones Arena 15 times a year. I'm with my friends there. There are four other white guys with comb-overs and Q-zips, and they all have pilsners <laughs> in their hands. And damn it, we have fun there and win all the games that we watch. There, there may be a March problem, especially when the Jims and the Joes don't quite match the X's and O's. Make it. You don't have to defend yourself at all. You won a national title. Here's a here's the ring, Dan. By exactly. The way. You would rather be us than Wisconsin. In a heartbeat, I will okay. never see a it. national title. In 2015, Wisconsin was up by nine points at halftime in the national title game against Duke. Oh. They lost that game, and immediately after that game, I said, on record, I will never be back in this moment. That was as yeah. close as I'll ever get. You could lose in the first round for the next 20 years and you still have a national title. You don't – like, Virginia's going to get – people are going to get their jokes off against Virginia. It doesn't matter. You guys get to put your head on your pillow every night and be like, remember that year we won the whole damn thing? There's nothing – nothing anyone can say to you. Bravo, Dan. You're well, right. let, let, let's, it's the truth. Let's, let's, and, start, let's start in the West then. Okay. Because then All we right. can talk about the ACC because – 
you know, we've, we've still got Clemson in, um, UNC in as well in the West. All five teams, all four teams that got into the tournament. We're eight, ACC's eight and one, and I well, want credit we're, we're for that one. No, as far as I I'm want concerned. credit for that one. We made the tournament. Well, that no, didn't no. really. That was that was the plan. You guys weren't really in the tournament. No, we were but, fully but here, in the tournament. <laughs> still I, be a banner. That was a test. You could have just said that you won a title right back to me. <laughs> do you do you guys look at this thing and say, hey, the ACC got job? Like the committee should no. should. Definitely take note of that. Or you, you like, hey, it is what it is. Like some teams are going to play above themselves in, in March. I don't, I don't think the committee. Like the only conference that I have a reasonable, like has a reasonable gripe is the Big Ten or Big East because they are six and zero, and they had those three teams that are on the bubble. That you know, Seton Hall, Dan Hurley said Saint it perfectly. John. Yeah, Saint John, Saint, Seton Hall said Dan Hurley said it perfectly. He's like, we are now on an eight-game winning streak in the NCAA tournament where we've won every game by double digits. There's one team that has beaten the fuck out of us in the last year and a half, and it was Seton Hall. They beat us by 15. How right. did they not get into the tournament? That happened in January. So who on the in the ACC had a legitimate, like, Pittsburgh, maybe? And Wake. Pittsburgh and Wake. Pittsburgh and Wake. Wake yeah, but yeah. Wake lost to Georgia Tech at home. Like, that, I watched that game. So I, I don't even think, like, I think the ACC, the top of the ACC is always going to be good. But I think the Big East has more of a gripe just because they had more of those teams that were right on the cusp and played some really good teams really, really well. And that Creighton, Marquette, UConn trio is probably, you know, the top, like of any conference, that's the best. If you said, give us your best three, that's the best three, right? Hmm. And I don't think we should play the results. I mean, those those three teams are top three seeds. They should be 6-0. and And it's, yeah, it's great that, Clemson and NC State are winning games, but I think you throw any of those teams in. Oh, Pittsburgh, a Seton Hall, yeah, they can Pittsburgh make noise. could make a Sweet 16 run. Yeah, the yeah. Way Seton Hall. Like. But, um, but if you did yeah. that argument, Duke played a, a 14 seed, no, a, a 13 seed and a 12 seed. NC State got a great draw in playing Oakland yeah. in the second round, and UNC was a one seed. Yeah, no question. And like Oakland, like for instance, Oakland. Um, I guess they lost to Wright State by 21. They trailed Detroit Mercy, who was 1-31 yeah. by 7 in the second half at home. So, you know, if, if a team like that knocks down shots, they're dangerous. But that's a pretty, that's a pretty fortuitous uh, setup for NC State. No doubt State. about it. I think the ACC, the ACC can be summed up in that Clemson surprised us all. Clemson is good. That's really the thing. That's what I was going to ask you was, like, this is a big swing team when you look at, like, the way the ACC performed in postseason play this year. This was one team that you were like, everything has to go right for them. So I'll, I'll ask you, Macon, what is it about Clemson's run so far that surprised you? I guess we should have known because New Mexico was just too public. I mean, they were they were so public. I couldn't get that bet in on time. They were the you ever favorite not, in a six eleven. You ever like all over a side, and then you're you're busy talking or looking at another line, or like you know, it's just the and then you miss getting that bet in. That for me was New Mexico. I was going huge on New Mexico. Didn't get it in on time. Yeah, I think I think opponents of UVA get to March and they think, oh, okay, good. These guys have a lot of first round losses. Like in the regular season, the ACC, they see like, oh fuck, we got Virginia. This is going to be painful. You see Clemson on the other side. You're favored. You take them lightly, and Clemson does uh, all the little things right. PJ Hall's really good. Yeah, Shefflin or whatever the hell his name is, really good. Chase Hunter's making shots. Joe Girard, They're capable. Joe Girard. Girard. Syracuse legend. Looks Terrible. Like a guy, it looks like a Southie. Yeah. Ter- oh, I got I got in trouble for saying Syracuse legend, but I do think he's a Syracuse legend. People he were like, you- you, he's, he only put, you know, he, he didn't win anything at Syracuse. I'm like, but Syracuse legend to me is like white point guard that can't really guard anyone but can hit every three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Carmelo Anthony, John Wallace, and Joe Girard. Yeah. Yeah. And what, okay. What, yeah. What was the other, what, what was his, what was Carmelo's, fuck, what was his name? McNamara. Yeah. Jerry McNamara's McNamara. the best. The He's bad. the white point guard yeah. from Syracuse. All right, so can can Bama hang with UNC? I mean, Kevin pointed this out. It's like Bama, I don't know, kind of impressive they could win they could win a low scoring game, like a physical game, you know, uh, against Grand Canyon. It was supposed to be That was the worst basketball game I have ever watched. <laughs> yeah. Easily. Yeah, so so Matt said it was one of the best basketball games. Oh my week. god, it was it was <laughs> awful. <laughs> Styles make fights. You guys say you can't watch UVA. I mean, UVA is like anime porn. I know you're watching anime porn, and I'm not judging you for it. Alabama Grand Canyon was just Fuck. bad basketball. It was bad. It it was. I didn't watch that game. To, to, Gross. To Chris's point, though, 
that was the first time I was like, I might have to take Alabama for real because I've watched a lot of Alabama basketball. They were terrible down the stretch, and more than anything, they were soft as fuck. Like, Florida just ate them alive in the SEC tournament down low, getting offensive rebounds, layups, all that stuff. Grand Canyon, they, Alabama won that game because they, ha- they had that, like, 90-second trip on their end where they got two offensive rebounds off missed free throws. They ended up with five points when they were down three and took all the momentum back. And that was the first time I was like, oh, shit, they're playing tough down low. And that was the best defense that Alabama's played in, like, two months. Um, I still would take UNC, but, yeah, that was the first time I was like, oh, maybe Alabama's not as soft as I thought they were. Hmm. And like them to zag next week. If they just played that clunker, they probably sear scores 35, they put up 100, and they do have a chance against Carolina. Yeah. All right, let's talk, let's talk about the other blue blood in the ACC. Let's move to the south because the question I have for you gentlemen is, is Duke tough? No. Because that's, that's the theme coming off of that JMU bloodbath is like, that's all they heard about all week. You know, JMU's a tough team, this, that, and the third, and they came to play, and it was personal, and I don't know. Now people are talking about Duke being um, like they belong here as, as, a, uh, as a one. Or they're not a one. They're four. They're, they're four. four. They got well, and they haven't beaten anybody. People are talking about them like a one now. They haven't beaten anybody higher seated than them since the 90s. Yeah. So, like, you know, is it fool's gold? I um I I think they're going to be in for a, a very big problem against Houston because if you want to talk about tough, that's the toughest team in the country. Exactly. They just beat you up. Uh, I thought the Duke JMU game was two parts. One JMU used a lot of energy beating the fuck out of my Badgers, and they just took the fight to them. And Wisconsin looked like absolute pathetic losers. Uh, and then Duke just hit all their shots. Like they hit every single shot. They against, were knocking them down. They dude. were 50% from three. Like, that's not going to happen again, especially against Houston. I think that's a really bad matchup for Duke just because of, like, Houston Houston will struggle in games like we saw on Sunday where Texas A&M went into that game and Buzz Williams had a brilliant game plan. He was like, all we're going to do is drive to the basket and get fouls. And they had the whole team fouled out. I don't think Duke is going to do that same thing where they're going to drive over and over uh, so yeah, I think I like Houston in that game. If you're looking at NC State and Marquette, I mean, this is um, for Shaka Smart. This is the first time they've gotten into the uh, Sweet 16. I think since that Final Four run. Yeah. Um, so this was a big weight off his shoulders. But I haven't been that impressed with Marquette and NC State. Like all this talk about them being burnt out. Now they have a whole week, you know. And I don't know if that's good or bad for them. But, I mean, you talk about a team that went, what, you probably know better than me. I mean, they were sub-500 in the ACC. Yeah. Um, but seven postseason victories in 12 days. People are talking about NC State like a Cinderella, and some people are saying you can't be a Cinderella. You're an ACC team. I think they can be a Cinderella. I think we can talk about them as a Cinderella because they are from the ACC, and all we've done is downed everybody in the ACC but UNC and Duke this postseason so I say they are a Cinderella and I think they can beat Marquette yeah I I mean the problem with Marquette is Tyler Kolick is a cheat code when he's healthy uh he's got an oblique it's everyone I, I saw someone pointed out and it was perfect Tyler Kolick driving to the left and the move he does where he kind of pushes you a little bit and extends his arm and hits it off the backboard is similar to the tush push and there's no way to guard that play like, mm-hmm. he, you can't guard that play. Um, but I agree. NC State, like, why not? Team of destiny. They're just playing great ball. They're just beating everyone. And uh, I, I do think it's a, like Marquette's a different beast, but it is kind of crazy the run they've been on. And their coach has made, like, $3 million in the past week and a half. He's got to be the only one who's made money in March Madness. He just keeps <laughs> getting bonuses after bonus right. after bonus extension. It's insane. By the way, the end of that Marquette game, Colorado didn't look like it knew what it was doing. <clears throat> what a great game. And it was great, yeah. I mean, because, you know, at they the end of the game, gap. I was like, if there's a way that they just get one shot off, we're going to cover here. I had Colorado, uh, and I was catching five points, and the guy took five seconds to take a three down four. Yeah. So, I mean, I love that end of game management from Colorado. Um Another thing I want to talk about in, in the South region is Kentucky. I mean, they're, they're in the rearview mirror now, but 
1985, 2019, 27-0 against 12 seeds or lower. 2021, 2024, 0-2. So this has become a thing, um, you know, where all of a sudden you're looking at these teams and you're looking at the head coach and saying, has he lost his touch? Is this something that Kentucky can no longer be? And is that a result of the new landscape of college basketball or something acutely affecting Kentucky? Everybody else can do what he was doing. Well, right, exactly. It's like the Saban thing. Yeah, he he adjusted better than anyone to the one and done, and now he has to make a readjustment to the fact that with NIL, you have teams that have guys who are 25 years old, and you probably need to mix some of them in. I also think <clears throat> Cal's problem is he just stopped coaching the last few years, right? And like, he like, all right, talent beats. You know, he says it himself. He's like, give me the talented guys every day, and he gets all the recruits. But they're never – like, they're not running great sets. They're not playing sound defense. I mean, I don't know how they got into that game and didn't know that Golki could just shoot the lights out. Like, it was insane. Like, he was the last the shot person – shot chart this year was insane. Insane. And the, he was the last person in the world to find out that this guy's going to shoot no matter what. Uh, so, I, I honestly think it's like – for Kentucky, it's just a situation of, like, they got a, a, a staff of recruiters, not a staff of coaches – and can Cal readjust to you, – you brought up Saban. Saban did it better than anyone where yeah. Saban would just, like, you know, he won with defense and running the ball. Then everyone went to spread. He went to spread. Then he went back to defense. Like, it, Cal hasn't made that second adjustment yet. Quick hitter coaches. If you're Kentucky, would you rather have John Calipari or Scott Drew? Mm. I think at this point, Scott Drew. But – we had Matt Jones on from Kentucky Sports Radio on Thursday night after their loss, and he pointed out that, like, the Kentucky job is different than every other job and that you kind of need a rock star. And Scott Drew would definitely be on their short list, but who's that rock star they can get? Like, they can ask Jay Wright, he'll say no. They can ask Brad Stevens, he'll say no. And then where do you go from there? If you're Wisconsin, do you want Greg Gard or somebody else? I would like... TJ Otzelberger from uh, Iowa, State. Iowa State. He's from Wisconsin. I'm. I. That was the reason why Friday night was so depressing for me. Was I think that was probably the end of like. It, it's been seven years since we've been to the Sweet Sixteen, which Wisconsin isn't like a premier program. I'm not going to pretend like they are, but we did have a nice twenty year run where it was like every every other year or every third year we'd we'd get to that second weekend. So if that's the standard, we're far far missing the standard. I just want to hit on one more game, obviously, from, from, the, from the south. Um, it was Houston and, and uh, Texas A&M, which I thought was as good a game as any game I saw all weekend. You guys were watching Bama and uh, Grand Canyon, but this was incredible, the 17-5 run to end regulation. The only buzzer beater we had all weekend was the Garcia 3. But I just wanted to say this, and I'm not like, you know, I am more of a casual when it comes to college basketball, but when I watch that game, I'm so impressed with Buzz Williams. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the guy can coach his ass off. Every double baseline inbound they had worked to perfection. They got the, the walk-on, shooting the free throw late. He, he missed the front end, I think, of the, the, the one-on-one, but then he hit the second one. Um, that, that zoom-in shot of that poor walk-on from Houston, they were down to like their, you know, their 12th guy because everybody's fouled out. And his eyes are darting all over the court. My favorite thing is to watch a guy get ready to take a free throw and try to handicap how ready he is. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just think that's March Madness to a T. And, and you had the buzzer beater. You had the great play calls. You know, every, every decision that it seemed like Buzz made worked out. And that Texas A&M team is fun to watch. I mean, I didn't watch them this year. It was fun to watch them. It was fun to watch his Marquette teams, as much as I hate to say it, the Virginia Tech run was was respectable so I just really like Buzz Williams and I thought Houston surviving that spot they can almost come out of that and say hey we've taken the best punch I mean it's hard to imagine a team getting hotter at the end of a game than that and it was a tough matchup for them yeah no it was a great game you sound though I want to just do you have one tv no, I've got multiple TVs. <laughs> I got multiple TVs but the problem you sound like a one night, tv guy you came across as a one tv guy there 
I, so I'm a multiple TV guy. The, <laughs> the first two days I spend like totally ADHD out trying to focus on, you know, what I can. And you feel like you don't even watch the games. That's why I love Saturday and Sunday because it, it, it becomes more manageable. And so sometimes I will turn on one TV. Now I've got another game on my phone. I actually, uh, my wife and uh, a lot of her teammates were back in town for like a lacrosse re reunion. So I didn't have a lot of choice with the TV set up last night, but uh, I, I was on, I was on. Uh, what does that mean? That what means that it's mean? one TV. That means you're a one TV guy making. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm a one TV guy. Like Bachelor in Paradise or what? Like no, it was like I had to hang out with them oh, last night it. because I hadn't been hanging out with them all weekend and they were watching Houston and okay. uh, and and A&M. Okay. And so, you know, for me, Grand Canyon and Bama was an afterthought. Plus, I didn't put any action on Grand Canyon. Yeah, that Bama was minus situation. seven and a half over here. Yeah, see, like for me, it was another situation where I missed the tip. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. Did they cover or not? They did. Okay. Very lucky. So, anyways, I, I might be a one TV guy at times, guilty as charged. Let's move to the. <laughs> let's move to the meanest thing I, you could say about a person. Probably the worst <laughs> thing that, like, you know how fans that your mentions are just like an opportunity to get pissed off at fans because they always have some stupid critique. The critique your TV fan is the worst. Yeah, you know, like like buddy, you, you don't think I have more TVs than you? I'm just I happen to be watching it in one room that has three TVs. You know, they're not. It's not. It's not going to be ideal every time I share my game setup. Is yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Midwest. Um, let's go Purdue because I'm just so impressed with this team, man. Like you watch them last year, uh, and you, you, they carry that. They carry that that baggage from the year before, and a lot of people like to draw the the UVA comparisons. But this team is better. Like, I'm sorry, I know it's going to offend you too, but uh, I don't know. They're very different. They're I think very. The, the biggest part of the two, the two freshman guards are sophomores. The, they're yeah. sophomores. They're deeper at guard than they were last year. They're more experienced. But I, I just feel like the way they're dis, dispatching of these teams looks a lot different than the way we did on our run. We were down ten. 10 or 15 to Gardner Webb. 14, yeah. In the first half. I mean, like Purdue looks like they're all business and and uh and I I I feel like I feel like they're the second best team in the country. Ooh. Yeah. Who? I still would probably take Houston, but yeah. uh yeah, no, Purdue's been incredible and they're you know, the Zach Eady discourse is very funny. Everyone's got an opinion. Uh I've watched him all, of, all his entire college career been frustrated with how good he is. He's gotten a lot better too. But yeah, Purdue they're playing great ball, and I you know they they'll need a bounce or two. But yeah, they're they're a tough tough team. How does Zach Eady sleep on the road? Huh. Ooh, good. You question. ever think about that? He's seven foot four. Okay, I mean he's not the only seven foot four guy ever. But like, how do you sleep when you're on the road? Like you you got to figure these guys have standard hotels. I think you bend your legs. You like think a, he bends his legs? I I'm, think he's sleeping I'm, diagonal. Maybe he's putting two queens together. I'm 6'4", up high in the air, and I sleep in my daughter's bed all the time, just bend the legs. So it's basically a Zach Eady situation. Uh, wait, Megan, you're 6'4"? Yeah, 6'4". You shocked? Yeah, you got a short face. Oh, really? Uh, I've always yeah. heard long face, but it is getting rounder. What do you mean I have a short face? Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I see you and I'm like, that guy's like, maybe it's just short energy, 5'9". <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Short energy. <laughs> That's the best thing I've heard on this show energy. from a guest. Uh, no, but the, uh, I think Zach Eady probably just sleeps like a horse standing up. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they, just, they just turn off the lights and they're like, all right, see you tomorrow, Zach. Do you think that Zach Eady's just good because he's tall? No. Okay, I was just making sure. He's incredible. Because Painter had some choice words for anybody that did. I only saw that he did. I haven't heard the words. The, yeah. pro the problem is he, he's better than just tall, but there are at least – three to four times a game where he is just too tall. So that's where people get it from. Like, there'll yes. be a couple times a game where he will just not even jump and he'll grab the rebound and then again not jump and dunk the basketball, and you're like, he's too tall. See, I think the guy from UConn's just the right tall. Yeah. Klingon, I yeah. think he's just the right tall. Yeah, I You know agree. what I'm saying? And then there's this guy, there's this guy from Colorado, uh, Dak, who looks like he's 7'6", but he's only 6'11". You know who I'm talking about? He's 180 pounds, the big center for, for Colorado. Yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah, you can be too tall. There's all types of different tall body types, and I think Edie sometimes does fumble around like he's too tall. But yeah. I think he's incredibly skilled. If he gets the ball with the back, his back to the basket, it's like over. Yeah, because they yeah. call a foul every time. Yeah, well, 
It's like DJ Burns. People Somebody want, watched Big Ten basketball. <laughs> people want fouls called on DJ Burns. Yeah. They ignore the fact that he has probably the best touch in the entire tournament. He really does, man. His hands really are does. so soft. But he, and, DJ Burns does every now and then. It makes me laugh. It's like almost his brain short circuits, and he just starts playing football for a second. Yeah. Where he'll like just throw a shoulder into someone, and you're just like, wait, that's not a basketball yeah. move. That's not legal. He, yeah. Well, he's built like he's 6'6", 280, but he's actually 6'9". Yeah, you know, three hundred. Like, yeah, yeah, he's about three hundred. So I think, I think if you look at the Midwest, um, I think the matchup that everybody's waiting to see is is Purdue and Tennessee. Did you yeah. guys how, catch? How, uh, you know, we got Rick Barnes advanced at Texas, hasn't it? Tennessee. Did you guys notice when they needed to make a free throw, Texas was fouling to get into the bonus, and the seventh foul they fouled Adu, who's not a good free throw shooter, right? And he just happened to make the front and back end of the mm-hmm, one and one mm-hmm. and I think Rick Barnes got off very easy with not getting the ball in the hands of connector anyone else really yeah. well there there's a there was another in the Midwest I've been looking at Oregon and Creighton the, the reason Oregon lost that game was the freshman guard throwing the ball into Dante well, mm-hmm. and, at the end of the game I yeah. mean like if if they just have a better inbound play you know it's and that's what it comes down to all the time it's yeah who's got the ball in their hands when it's time to foul also, we should mention Mark Few. Like it's insane those stats. I don't know if you guys saw him. He has won uh, a first round game fifteen straight years. He's been in the tournament twenty four straight years his entire career at Gonzaga. He's won a first round game fifteen straight years. He's gone yeah. to the Sweet Sixteen nine straight years. That's that's ridiculous. Like winning a tournament game is hard to do. He has won at least two tournament games for nine straight seasons. That's stupid. So he's. He's one of those guys that it feels like he always gets the best out of his team and they overachieve, not underachieve in March. Surely he has a national title. He does not. Along the way. Oh. But he does have a DUI. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and his dogs were just way dogs. too – Yeah, those dogs. <laughs> I, like his dogs were just so big. When that dog popped out, two of them. It's, it's like, big. what the fuck are you doing, man? It's too big. Put the dogs in the back. Um, the last one I want to ask you about in the Midwest is, uh, well, I wanted to ask you first, can Tennessee beat Purdue? I mean, I know they can, but how do you see that matchup? Yes, I do think they can because yeah. they just survived their worst shooting game they've had in a very long time. And I am a big believer not every tournament run is going to be like UConn last year where they just wasted everyone. You're going to have to survive at least a couple games where you have like a B minus C plus from your team and that's what they did against Texas. So I I think that was like that game against Texas was a classic Rick Barnes loses that game and everyone says, "Oh, Rick Barnes in March." Surviving that gives them almost new life. Isn't it crazy when you consider the fact that Cuisnart and Dante scored all their points in the second half that Oregon was able to go to OT with with these guys. I mean, like eventually Creighton pulled away in the second OT. I think they scored like 15 in a row. Uh, and you knew it was going to be – you know it was the dagger when Kalkbrenner hit a three. Right. Like it was like when the big man is like, yeah, fuck it, I'll take a three. And and they, they hit on their first two possessions. But I think Creighton really impressed me with with uh, how they sustained that, that run from Oregon because Oregon was on uh, – Cuisinart was on fire, dude, at the end of that game. Yeah, and they're another team. Like, they shot – they're not going to shoot that bad again. They missed no, so many open exactly. shots. And Oregon just ran out of gas. They were playing two on five – I mean, you saw it. They were literally walking. There was multiple times in that game they were where I thought they were calling a timeout because that's how slow they were walking it up the court. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, they just ran out of gas. And I, I think that, yeah, Creighton is kind of similar to Tennessee in that you're not going to have another day where they shoot as poorly as they do from three. All right, let's talk about the East because I came out of that UConn game. I watched that run uh, at the end of the first half against Northwestern, and I was just like – I just remember – FAU, when they played Northwestern, that coach who now got the Michigan job. Dusty May, yeah. How do you feel about that, by the way? Uh, good hire. He's a good, good coach. Yeah, yeah, he's a good coach. Um, Will Wade's probably going to Louisville. I think that's way scarier. Well, D- Dusty May comes out of a timeout, and he's getting interviewed by you know whoever it was on the sideline, and he's like, I did not realize how physical this group was. Like, this defense is – Oh, you an apology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I wasn't familiar with the game, and then – and then, you know, UConn just dominates this group in the most physical way. I mean, the, the points in the paint, they were hitting shots. Um, I, I, I love the big man. I, I, I feel like 
I agree with everybody. They're the best in the tournament. I mean, it's like if you had to pick a favorite right now, it's UConn for me. Um, I, I, I don't know who can beat them. Illinois. In, Illinois. I mean, that's the one answer in, in their bracket. Um, I, and Brad Underwood talking about making changes over the past couple of years in his philosophy – because that's a guy that wasn't out of the, the first weekend for a long time. I mean, like, that surprised me. And he said, like, the Kofi run, you know, we started building things a little bit differently. We wanted bigger wings and that sort of thing. And, and I wonder if the bigger wings is going to be the key to, to posing an, a, a chance against UConn. Booty ball. They're playing booty ball with Damask. Uh, Villanova. Yeah. Everyone watched Villanova do it where they just have one of their guys just back down. Uh, an undersized guy, and there's nothing they can do about it. But Terrence Shannon has been on a tear, an absolute yeah. tear. He's averaging 30 and a half points in the last six games. The only problem with Illinois is that they don't play a ton of defense. Uh, so, and I think UConn. The, the scary thing about UConn is they can just they can do whatever style you want to do. Like if right. you want to run, they can run. Oh, they ran. They they were killing them in transition early in that game. Exactly. If you want to slow it down and play defense, they'll do that. Like they have an answer for seemingly every single problem. Uh, but yeah, I, I I agree that like in in the tournament, if you have two guys who can get a bucket at any time, and Illinois has that, they are immediately as scary as scary could be for a one game knockout situation. I think it's a good time to talk about the Big East again. I I, I found out that uh, Hurley is part of a group chat in the Big East where they lift each other up and, and lament the treatment of the conference and all the head coaches in the conference are, are firing away on this group chat all the time. Who do you want to see in a Big East group chat the most? Patino. Patino? Patino. That's, that's an easy answer for Dan. Yeah. Um, How was having Patino on the show? It was good. Everything? It was nerve-wracking. We said a lot of things. I have a stalker who has stalked me about the things I've said about Rick Patino. Um, so it was a big moment. It was a very big moment. Uh, but yeah, I, I Patino probably, I mean, our producer, Max Philly guy, Villanova fan. We like Max. He, yeah, he, he had a very funny line, uh, last week where he called the Big East getting only three teams in anti-Italian discrimination. We're like, what are yeah. you talking about? And he was like, the Big East <laughs> is an Italian league. And yeah, we're like, you know what? I, you're actually kind of right. Like it is yep. an Italian league. Yep. So yep. I would like to see Patino, maybe Calipari get to, to a big East team that would kind of add to it. So that would be a fun group. I love Dan Hurley. The fact that he found a way to motivate his team on tip time is so perfectly psycho Dan Hurley. I don't know if you guys saw this clip, no, but he, they told him after they went to the, clinch the sweet 16, they're like, yeah, so you're going to be tipping off first in Boston on Thursday. You're the first game in the Sweet 16. He's like, oh, okay, the disrespect continues. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to tip <laughs> off first? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That's yeah. what he's going to find. It's crazy. Well, he does seem like a psycho in the best way. Uh, it, I'm going to give a worse car ride out to the big man from Northwestern, Nicholson, who's seven foot two eighty. He drove 12 hours with his mom to Chicago to, to watch the game in a boot. And then obviously had to drive 12 hours back after that. Um, and, and one more thing about Northwestern. I want Chris Collins, like when I die, I want Chris Collins to send me out. Like I want him to come to my deathbed and whisper whatever he whispered in Boo Booey's ear and whoever. He was, he was so kind to those players at the end of that game. You could really tell Chris Collins and those players are, are connected. I would love for Chris Collins to, to send me off into the afterlife. Do you know yeah. Boo Booey's government name? No. Dan. He's Dan Bowie. No way. Oh, yeah. no. That's Why'd not you as do cool. That? Yeah, yeah. That's not as Sorry. cool. Sorry. Why'd you um, do that? Okay, and the Big Ten, just one more thing about the Big Ten. This is from Tate Frazier. Uh, last three years, 23 bids, four times to the Sweet 16. So not a very good record for, for the Big Ten as of late. And for, for Tom Izzo, he says he's going to go on a deep run or die trying. What do you think is going to happen first? I don't know. They looked pretty good in those first. They sure minutes. did. <laughs> they, they sure in the first game. I. It's in there. It's in there. He's got the secret sauce. The Big Ten has a Illinois has figured it out. The Big Ten has an issue where it's similar to football, and Michigan finally figured it out. Where like we build teams to beat each other in regular season, and then we get to the tournament, and it's like, oh, not every team needs like a lumbering seven footer. Like maybe you should yes. just get a bunch of wings and play that style of basketball. So. The Big Ten has an issue. We're going to sort some things out. We're going to add some teams from out west, increase our chances. That'll be nice. 
So that's all the the regions. Yeah, we need okay. hit vibes. We hit we hit vibes. The all vibes draft 2024. Have you done all vibes draft with us, Dan? I have not. I don't think. Pretty, pretty. I awesome. think he understands the assignment. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, who who gets the first pick? Uh, number between he gets the first pick. I don't want. I don't. I don't. Why does he get the first that. pick? I think we need to randomize. Oh, you randomized it. Okay, oh. take your first pick then. Well, that's a lot of pressure. Well, I think all chalky. my all my people are kind of gonna last. Um, oh, I'm really? Gonna go. Yeah. Yeah, I got a great big board. Ah, but I really want him. Fuck it, chalk one one. DJ, Burke. fuck you, DJ. Oh, Burke. that's he's been not, on my. He's a, he's been on my vibes. One one. Yeah, he's been on my vibes team. Yeah, DJ Burns. Need I explain it? I need not. Let's go to the second overall pick. It's uh, Chris. Sorry, Dan. God damn it. I'll go. Uh, I'll go. Audie Crooks. Look her up. Go ahead. Her? Look her up. Yeah, look her up. You said a her. <laughs> I do I don't know think I you, understand this. Those barstool Vibes. guys. A woman? Uh, <laughs> Audie Crooks has been getting buckets, man, and she's the one who fouled Cam Brink out last night from mm-hmm. Stanford. So she's uh, num- big number 55 from Iowa State. Um, oh, yeah, Crooks, I do know her. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she is awesome. How could you argue with that first pick? I'm confused at the Vibes pa- draft. Don't no, you just you, you roll just with it. Okay, all right, great, because I have my one one and I cannot believe no one picked him. Jack Golke was the vibes this weekend. It's he, a good pick. He was it's the vibes. Pick. He was he was built in a lab for mm-hmm. March Madness. Mm-hmm. He he looks like he's thirty years old. He looks like he already works at Enterprise or Deloitte. He Ray looked, Zielinski. He 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 played uh, Division Two for four years. Then went one year at Oakland. Hit every big shot. Hit ten threes against Kentucky. Like the best way to describe it is the March Madness story is Jack Golke had no reason to beat a team of all pros in Kentucky, and all those pros of Kentucky are going to go on to be insanely rich and make millions upon millions of dollars. But Jack Golke can always say. I had them one day. I beat them one day. Like, he'll tell that story for the rest of his life. That's a March Madness hero right there. That's what March Madness is about. He might be an NIL star. You saw, what did he get? The, um, was it Rocket Mortgage or or something? Uh, They just shot, it was tax, turbo tax. Instantly. Terrible, terrible ad. (laughs) I mean, it's shot on an iPhone in a hotel ballroom. So, and. So we had him on the show. We had him on PMT. How was he? He was great. He told the story. He explained it because we're like, dude, like that was crazy how fast you had an NIL deal. Yeah. He said he had two. He has two friends who he just set up an email. His friends were like, we got to capitalize. And he's like, fine, you guys do it. So he has two friends who just went through all his NIL deal, deal offers and just picked a couple and was like, all right, film this. And he's like, whatever. And so that's how he made his NIL Friends money. Friends managing your business in sports is not going well lately. <laughs> so I don't, yeah. I don't know. The guy had a little Howie Long to him. Yeah. yeah with, the, with the And then Kyle Brandt as well. Kyle was like, he looks like me. But he kind of looks like Howie Long. Yeah. Are we in a snake? Snake style. Dan, you're up again. We're oh, snake. great. Great. I got another great pick. I bet you do. I'll go with Elvin. Okay. Elvin yep. was all vibes. That was yeah. another one where it was like the most March Madness story ever. Houston is collapsing in overtime. The guy who comes in, Elvin, his name's Elvin. Yeah, white Elvin. dude hasn't mm-hmm. sweat in a hundred years, and he has to take the two biggest free throws of his life. I think he played like a hundred minutes all season, all in probably blowouts. Uh, he was up late jacking off and all <laughs> tor- all types of stuff the night before, not even thinking about playing. Yeah, dude. Kelvin. Kelvin Sims was like, Elvin, you're in. He's like, what? <laughs> what? Are you fucking serious, dude? So Elvin was all I got to put my vibes. uniform on, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elvin. Okay, that's a good pick. Yeah. You're Elvin. Oh, I'm up? Oh, I'm up? Um, now I want a guy. Robbie Avila from Indiana State of the NIT. We're going NIT? His, his nickname uh, is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's also known as Larry Nerd, College Jokic, and Milk Chamberlain. Okay, just pull up a picture of this guy's vibes are impeccable. Uh, he should have been in the uh, NCAA tournament. Yeah, so. sorry on behalf of Virginia for winning so many fucking games this season and mm. keeping him out. Mm-hmm. Which also, the, uh, he could yeah. have been in the NCAA tournament if they beat Drake. That's right. Yeah, who chokes. That's right. Chokes. Do you ever do a dream chase, Dan? I call it a dream chase where you're chasing, but you don't want to stay up late and you just bet a game and go to sleep. Oh, yeah. Wake up. Yeah, mm. I did one of those with Drake. 
Yeah. And then I doubled down with the live. It was bad. Bad. Turns out they do choke. They choke. Sixth pick is Keisei Tominaga. Yeah. Good pick. This this guy went from talking oh, yeah, shit Nebraska. in a guy's face to crying, to crying within about 15 Maybe minutes. Maybe the Bears will draft him. <laughs> was that a shot? At, was that a shot at Caleb Williams? No, it's a shot at all of you. Okay, we think okay. you're getting Patrick Mahomes. I love that. We guy. are. He's, we he's, are. He's, oh yeah. Clip this. Ask, can someone whoever's working behind every can, other day? Can someone clip this and just send it to me for my personal files? Yeah. Uh huh. I'm gonna jerk uh, off to that later. Okay. <laughs> to the Nebraska guard? No, to you saying Caleb Williams. You are into is anime porn. Sucks. Tony uh, is the best though. He's I watched him all year. Like he just he's a flamethrower. He the first ten minutes of the, that game, he hit every three, and then yeah, he just completely self Dude, if, if you're yeah. an Asian guy that 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 gets to the top of American sports, you're definitely going to be cool as fuck. Yes, like the kicker in Atlanta, um, like the guy from Nebraska, like like I Shohei and his gambling one. problem. Shohei. Yeah, that's yeah. cool as shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good week. All right. Patience. Seventh pick um, is easy for me. It's Kim Mulkey. I would leave my family for Kim Mulkey. She is a gorgeous woman with passion. She uh, Now, this is all pending the Washington Post story. I don't know what's going to be included in there. But just a, a real uh, real chesty firecracker of a woman. You yeah. know? All vibes. Yeah. All of them. Mm-hmm. Kim Mulkey has them. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what, what, what I asked you, what you had for today, what you said? Oh, top 10 sex things to do with Kim Mulkey. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I said I could go to 25 if the, if, if the guys wanted to, but then there were crickets. Okay. Am I up next? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you are. Oh, I am? Okay. Uh, give me... I've got my top three so far. Give me Seth Pounds. Back. He's an eighth year... St- senior uh for howard nobody worked the system like seth pounds dude eight years of college incredible he started at penn state or is that somebody else i don't know where he started but he ended up with the bison and that was about as bad a team as i saw play uh this this past weekend yeah i mean they were awful they were were really bad i i started to wonder dan not to accuse howard of throwing games but i feel like there is in the past i've always laughed off these gambling conspiracy theorists who are like everything's a throw you know and it's usually the 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 guys from the northeast like the italian guys i'm sure jersey jerry is constantly saying that like oh did you see what he did there like they definitely have the under when that's not the case at all but i think now in the tournament you look at teams from these smaller conferences and you got fifth year seniors they know they're gonna lose like there is a chance when you turn on your tv now that somebody has somebody's on the take is that, that's just what I think. I don't know about you, Dan. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can let the conspiracy, especially because you have four days of basketball and you watch all this basketball, you don't sleep, and then your mind just goes crazy. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, crazy. You, you nailed Jerry perfectly. He thinks uh, – he thinks the Italian guys. Well, he thinks COVID uh, started turbulence. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't turbulence yeah. before COVID. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you nailed that. Uh, yeah. Okay. I got the next two. You do. Uh-huh. All right, I will go with uh, I'll go with Jamal Sheed from Houston. Shed, uh, yes, good Shed, pick. Sheed, Shed, uh, that jump, that hop step that he made yep. to score the big bucket against Texas A&M, where he he started probably fifteen feet out of oh, the, it was inc- incredible. Yeah, out, out of the and paint. the dunk, insane. the dunk, like five minutes before that. Yes, the dunk. Yes, it, like insane. That guy has just insane hops and uh he put the team on his back in overtime when everyone fouled out so he's awesome and then my other one is going to be oh i'll pick the um since we're really just going vibes i'll pick the fucking big shoulder yale guy who was sitting front row who was in every every shot that guy never no one's ever been more yale than that yale guy. guy you know who i'm talking about <laughs> okay he had no, the, making nose because yeah, I was a one, I, I was in a one TV thing. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I know you because, were. Because I had Yale, and I just looked at the score. I said, "Fuck this." Yeah, he he just has like the broadest shoulders ever, a big Y sweatshirt or sweater, and just walks around just exuding Yale everywhere he goes <laughs> to everyone. Yale. Probably mm-hmm. like a world class rower. Um, he's just chin yeah. up, chin up, great posture. Oh, dude, 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 pull up a picture making for him. You, you'll see yeah. it, and you know that was a good pick. Okay. 
All right, is it me? It is you. Oh, fuck. I guess I got to pick a good player at some point. Uh, no, Audie Crooks can ball. I So, I'm going to go Jeffrey Yan from Long Beach State. Uh, big Asian. <laughs> you like the small Asians? That is the most Yale guy ever, dude. He was fun. Look at that. Is that a cable knit? Or <laughs> yeah. what are we calling that? Yeah. I mean, that sweater is awful. Awful. I want to turn it around to Dan, but I don't know what's on my tabs. Okay, so do you remember Jeff, Jeffrey Yang yeah. from early in the, in the weekend? Show it to big, Chris. Big number 40? I did. I did. Okay. I did. Yeah, I've He's seen it. But you guys, you guys might be t- one TV guys. You don't, you don't catch the Long Beach State games. I am going to have to look up Jeffrey Yang. Jeffrey Yan. Yan. 69260. Big Asian. Oh, yeah. Nobody like him. I love Long Beach State. Next pick, Bill Raftery. He's only getting better. Yeah. I think, for my money, best color analyst in sports. He's always a little bit drunk. He's in the know. What more can you want from a from an analyst? Had dinner with Bill Murray two nights ago. Did he? Yeah, he's That's a cool, cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Murray's kid is coaching uh, UConn. No way. Yeah, yeah. Assistant he's coach. assistant coach. I didn't know that. Uh, how deep are we going here? We're still going. Five. Five? Five. So I only have Five. one more. One, one more? Two, three, four. Wow. Oh, my okay. God. Um, mm, AJ stores out there you know, five of fourteen, several turnovers. Not going to go there. Now, if I'd have known, we don't get a six man. I mean, I've got a couple people here. I would have. I mean, you've made some really interesting picks. You couldn't have fit them. Only if you don't know how to draft anywhere. Okay, I'm going to make a pick, and it's going to be Grant Nelson, Alabama. The guy uh, has got a bowl cut with a mustache. <clears throat> Yep. Could not be more Caucasian. Yep. I like how he leans into it. He yeah. should play for Virginia. Yeah, thank no, you. No, he's or way Wisconsin. too gritty to play for Virginia. We don't have guys with mustaches. We're like the we think we're the Yankees. Also, he can shoot. So that's <laughs> Yankees. That yeah. takes out Virginia. He can shoot. Yeah. yeah. Could have played on our national title team. Yep. Um Okay, is it me? Yes. Fucking A, dude. I <sighs> fuck. I'll do Kuznard. Okay, okay, good pick. The Oregon guy. I like okay. him. I like him. I like him a lot. And if I have one more pick, no, just well, wait. You don't. Yeah. You don't. Yeah, you don't. You actually don't have one more pick. Oh, yeah. fuck you guys. You're one TV guy with no more picks. I don't do drafts. Uh, my last pick will be Dan Munson from Long Beach State. One of the best stories in March Madness. The fact yes. that he got fired before the conference tournament. Yes. Decided to keep coaching the team. What Got them to the tournament. Uh, and he was like, he had the best, I, I watched some clips. He just had the best attitude about it. Like he said, the day that he got fired, uh, he went, he got fired. They announced he was fired. They announced he was sticking around for, for the week in the conference tournament. He went right into film film study with, uh, his team and was like, see this closeout right here. This is what gets coaches fired. And it was just like <laughs> shit like that. So I just, I love that guy. That guy's awesome. And then he was like, Hey, I don't really have to be here. <clears throat> right. I'm not even technically. Yeah. Dan, Dan, do you know yeah, Long Beach fun. State's nickname? No. Beach. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. They're Long Beach State Beach, which that is, is awesome. unbeatable. Did you guys know that Grand Canyon is uh, actually the fifth closest school in Arizona to the Grand Canyon? Did you know that Charles Barkley <laughs> has never been to the Grand Canyon? And when they asked him, by the way, I love the fact they put Chuck on these. We were talking about this earlier. Like, I don't think he's watching a lot of college basketball, but he's just so fucking entertaining. But they were like, Chuck, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? He said, no. And he said, they told me it's a big hole there. <laughs> <laughs> are we doing Are we doing did you knows right now? Because I have an all-time did you know. You hit me. Please. Did you know that Matthew Broderick killed a person? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, pretty crazy. Head. Did you yeah. know that Clyde Edwards Hilaire killed a person? That was actually the coolest of killing a person because as Cause he being, was right. He was right. He got proved right. <laughs> Who did Matthew Broderick kill and? He killed How like a woman in, in England because oh. he was driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh, I like, did hear that. Early in his career. Yeah. Just a crazy did you know. Yeah, that is a crazy did you know. Yeah, I dropped that um, on people. It's it's kind of a bummer, yeah. but also it gets a reaction. We can handle it Yeah. as, as, as sports fans. We, we, we've cheered a bunch of murderers on. Um, okay, so we've got, so we've, got uh, we've got this coach's picture that we want to talk about. By the way, great blog. Thank you. Glad to see the the the, the pen is still working. Dan, uh, you're ca- 4 a.m. 
Well, you're capitalizing a lot of weird words. Are you aware of this? Did you hear me saying I was staying up till 4 a.m. after four days of March Madness? Mm -hmm. I don't write. I write how I'm like Dr. Seuss. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Mm-hmm. Artistic, I mean, artistic uh, license. Making. You've inspired me to start blogging, so in look for a blog. In the second sentence alone, the word spring is capitalized. Who cares? Head coaches is capitalized. I do whatever I want. Sun is ca- just, you know, a little bit of dumb guy energy, Dan. He does whatever he wants <laughs> I like, do. like I Dave am a Canales. Dumb guy. <laughs> he does whatever he wants like Dave Canales. Yeah. Who wrote oh. shorts. And a hot guy. Bro, yeah. You've got another hot, hot guy. guy. And look also wrote the- a cuck book. He did write, write yeah. a book. <laughs> Wait, is it a cuck book? Like, well, when you have to write a book, being like, "Here's why I cheated on my wife, and I'm better so about it." That, a cuck yeah. that yeah. seems like a cuck book. I don't think yeah. you want to. I don't think any guy was like, "Hey, let me write this book about how I cheated on you." Man, if he ever told me to like get in the sea gap, I'd be like, "You masturbate a lot." Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, like, remember you when you told the whole world that you cheated on your wife with a book? Yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, okay, so he's in the front row. And by the way, we don't have a problem with any of these people. But Canalis, that's a bold move to rock the shorts. Uh, also, one thing I want to put point out was like, I think there's something to be said for how these guys are clasping their hands. I want to do a study on that because some of them go full interlock, some of them go like kind of like uh, they grip the sides of their hands, and then there's Jim Harbaugh who doesn't know what the fuck he wants to do with his hands. No, and I think that perfectly encapsulates him. He couldn't be any more uncomfortable than he is in this picture. Yeah. He's perfect. The Harbaugh brothers just back together. I love it. Um, I, this, is my favorite, this is my favorite picture every year. It's just incredible. It's just like they get all these dudes who are just the most alpha dudes in the world staring into the sun, uh, looking awkward as fuck. Gerard Mayo, I mean, that's your boy, Chris. Yeah. What happened there? <laughs> that's that's my favorite descriptor. I don't know. What do we say? What, the what, guy whose mom with, forgot it was picture day and dressed him like it was normal Monday award. <laughs> well, he is Gerard a player, Mayo. you know, and and right. and the players like to to rock the uh, dry fit. Now at least Dan Campbell threw on a collar, and he looks tremendous, dude. Yeah, I like the way you put it. Fuck or fight. Yeah, he's a fuck or fight guy. He's like every night you go out, and it's just like I'm either gonna fuck a chick or I'm gonna fight someone and bash their skull in. <laughs> Can I tell you a rumor I heard about Dan Campbell that I tried to tell Lee McNeil the other day, but I don't think he understood, was that Dan Campbell, when he he went to Las Vegas as a player, and we're not sure if he's still doing this or not, take a guess where he likes to stay. I don't know. you got to give it to me. I love Dan Campbell so much. It's Caliber. Oh, that's perfect. I was going to say New York, New York. (laughs) He stays in a castle. I love it. I love it. He was on an NFL budget, and he was staying at the Excalibur. There's nobody better than Dan Campbell. The one one guy you brought up, uh, which I thought (laughs) needed to be talked about, was Dennis Allen's fit. Yeah. What did you refer to him as? I said he was a Serbian uh, arms dealer or a guy who's way too into F1. I don't know what he was doing with the logo-less black hat and the logo-less top of a jumpsuit. But he might just be in witness protection where he just wanted to show up and be like, hopefully no one re- realizes that the Saints didn't fire me. I'm still me. coaching, yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. In the pictures I've seen, he, he had a pretty good head of hair, so I don't know what's up with him being the only guy with a hat. Uh, and, then, and then lastly, um, I thought you were a little hard on Kevin O'Connell. I think the guy looks like an absolute alpha. You, you think he looks like a surprisingly I, I, adept athlete. Yeah, I just don't. I, I, I think the uh, Dwight Schrute uh, short sleeve shirt just never works. The button down sh- short sleeve shirt. I think it just always is a weirdo move. Who's the hottest coach here, Macon? Dave Canales. D'Amico Ryan. Who's the second hottest coach? <sighs> Probably McVay or LaFleur. Look at how LaFleur. Here, just what I want to say about LaFleur, though. And obviously, LaFleur's been hitting the weights. But he definitely pulled his sleeves up to expose his biceps. He did the armpit trap thing. And McVeigh's doing a little bit, but McVeigh doesn't have to do it. He's got he's gunned out. He's got guns. Yeah, he's gunned out. I got it. Canales one, Stefanski two, Tomiko Ryan's three. I don't think you can put Canales one. He'll cheat on you, Macon. Well, no, Dave Canales is so hot that he, he couldn't. He couldn't tame himself. Yeah, I mean, it's not even cheating because it's just yeah. people are throwing themselves at him. Is John Gannon hot or is he just weird no. looking? No. Serious? I don't know. No. You're the one who no. knows if guys are hot. Not hot. No. Okay. And I, I would say I do this every year. I, I sometimes, because like, it's weird because I've gotten, I started this 11 years ago when I didn't know any of these guys. Now I know a bunch of them. So I always am like, how hard can I go? But if you read the blog, I think I, I do a good job towing the line. The meanest thing I do every single year is just being like, oh, yeah, that's Zach Taylor. 
Because mm-hmm. every year I see the picture and I'm like, oh, yeah, that is Zach Taylor. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> I and, never and, know his face. And who's and who the fuck is that guy? For the first Tennessee. time, I could not. Callahan. I didn't Callahan. come up with Callahan. Yeah, Callahan yeah. just looks like he was super impressive. I haven't rolled sleeves up above the elbow since we were in like middle school. Uh-huh. Yeah. I thought, and that was a cool look. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where's Kyle Shanahan in relation to Dan Quinn? Pretty far away. Pretty far away. Kyle Shanahan looks like that meme, the the like uh, soldier with the helicopters and explosions behind him. That's mm-hmm. what his face is right now. He's like, I just can't keep losing Super Bowls. Hey, where's Nick Sirianni? Not there. Not pictured. Not pictured. Matt Eberflus, Tomlin, Sirianni. Oh, I think Sirianni. McCarthy. Sirianni probably can't go because Big Dom might still be suspended. My Big Dom <laughs> suspended. He can't leave the house. Big Dom texted um, me, Chris. Did he? One of the greatest texts I've ever got. He's like, he thank likes you, guys. you guys. Yeah, he's like, thank you guys for the support. Like, my fellow yeah. Paisans. I'm not yeah. Italian at all. I, yeah. I have Italian children, so I'm, I'm, I, I live with Italians. But uh, Max was, like, over the moon. He was just like, send me that screenshot. I need He texted me to ask about you guys. He's like, I like, I like those guys. You know, they, they, they've been talking positively about me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, they're good people. We did. <laughs> you, we said, we you, said like, like, the... There's nothing like, that has to be done. Like, big, build the uh, whole plane out of the black box. We are like, yeah. build the Eagles out of Dom. Just, yeah, make, just, just make Dom. Dom everything. Dom's incredible. Um, b- before we go, I want to ask you about... Um, I want to ask you about two things. I want to ask you first about a football topic, and that's Caleb Williams. What is your excitement level? Um, do you do, and if you are excited, do you realize that you're just convincing yourself of something? Mm, wrong. I'm 100 out of 100. He's going to be the best Bears quarterback ever. Low bar. Low bar. Uh, he's going to win a Super Bowl. He's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. He's going to be awesome. And idiots like you who don't know ball are going to look, you're going to have to call me up one day and be like, hey, remember that time I said Caleb Williams sucked? I'm like, wait, is this, who is this? this I didn't what, say this, he sucks. It, I, I'm like, who, That's the who, thing, though. I never who, said he sucked. If who, this gets clipped, I never said he sucked. I'll be like, who is this? Is this one TV Chris I'm talking to? I'm like, yeah, I remember that time. <sighs> and TV I'll say, I, and you know what? I will be fair to all the doubters. I'll be like, don't worry about it. It's no sweat off my back that you couldn't see what I saw. It's not that you guys think it's going to go well. It's why you guys think it's going to go well. Because he's awesome, and the Bears have set up, for the first time in franchise history, they've actually set up a quarterback to succeed. Can we, can we put into place like uh, an actual, um, I don't know, a marker for you know, what going well looks like? Sure, this I'll take year over so two and a half Super Bowls <laughs> this year. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I understand the thirst for like uh, Patrick Mahomes, but you know, it's not. It's not likely that you're going to find a Patrick Mahomes. You never know. No okay. one thought he was Patrick Mahomes before he was Patrick Mahomes. You're right about that. Including like most of the teams in the league. Yet every team in the league thinks Caleb Williams is Patrick Mahomes, and we're generally not good at this. That's my only thing. That's my only thing. And another thing is they were unfair to Justin Fields. If Justin Fields had this covered. You know, I agree. The thing that Caleb oh. Williams is walking into, maybe we're not even having this conversation. Completely agree. The Bears failed so, Justin Fields every single way. Like, they yeah, could so not have failed him. RG3, Caleb Williams should not sign with the Bears. RG3 is a fucking dummy. It's a total, it's a totally I like him, situation. but man, he was a it's dummy. A totally different situation. <laughs> um, okay, and then the last question is where are we on Shohei Otani? When, when we taped Friday or Thursday, I was like, listen. This translator's the fall guy. There's, yes. There's no way, number one, and this is one thing that got me, Dan, and I don't know where, where you land on this, but like, if you're Shohei Otani and you're placing bets, what is the one sport you're not going to bet on? Baseball. Oh, I was going to say March Madness because you always lose. Yeah, right. But baseball, if you're Shohei. Now, th- whoever was placing these bets never bet on baseball and you're 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 telling me that this translator was willing to fuck his friend over but was like worried about mlb rules like he's gonna steal 4.5 million dollars from his friend but not bet baseball as to not ruffle the feathers of his employer like that just doesn't didn't make sense to me and and more information is coming out about the guy's alma mater where he may or may not have gone to school has anything changed for you since last week no i've always thought it was shohei betting um the only thing i'm hoping for is shohei i think has a press conference later today he does how much would it rock if he showed up 
and he spoke fluent English. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he had, That'd like, a incredible. Jersey accent. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be the great. It'd be, he'd be like Kaiser Soze. It would be just so incredible. <laughs> we were saying as a punishment, this is the one time Americans can rightfully be like, you need to learn the language because we can't trust your translators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and know, it, you... it's great that, like, he... Assimilate. Fought, it's a perfect fall guy because now he doesn't have his translator, so now he can just every single interview be like, well, I got a new translator. I don't know. Yeah, this guy's better. Yeah. I actually learned the language. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> um, story, though. So he's still gambling, in your opinion, even if this guy's a total fraud. Yeah, he's gambling. That's fine. I have no okay. problem. He should not hit I got it. no problem with it either. Yeah. Okay. No problem. All right. Well, uh, Dan, we appreciate the time. We hope you uh, you turn this thing around next weekend, win some money. Yeah. Um, and UVA is a better program than Wisconsin. That's a fact. Love coming on. Uh, shout out, Chris, for being very, very smart and uh, asking me to do this show two months ago. Uh, <laughs> because if he had asked me at any point in the last week, there is no chance no I would have done it. Uh, but he, he asked has me. A calendar. He asked me so long ago that I was like, "We will never see this day." Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. And then this day came, and I was like, "Oh fuck, I haven't slept, but let's do it." That's what happens, man. That's why I ask people months out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> was, yeah, um, you literally asked me in February. You're like, hey, March 25th, can you do the show? I was like, what? That's yeah. That's called planning. All these motherfuckers are in here like, Chris, you don't plan enough. And then I, uh, I booked the guests out for two months. You no, know, you plan the fuck out of this one. Yeah, you, there we you, go. Good job. Appreciate, yeah. you, Good job. appreciate you sticking to the plan. Uh, yes. Yes. All right, well, uh, tell those guys what's up, and uh, we, we hope to talk to you soon, Dan. All right, thanks, guys. Love coming on. Uh, making sorry that you have short energy, but that's just a fact. <laughs> I just Bye, Dan. Sorry. Fact, dude. Bye, Dan. <laughs> All right.